I remember when my father told me this, it sent chills down my spine. Though we all live in the States now, my father grew up in Northern England. Anyone who has spent time up there knows that, especially in cities like York, stories of hauntings are very common. The whole country feels like it's run by ghosts sometimes. My father was a kid when this took place, but my uncle, who is five years older, has also attested to this story's validity. Not only are the cities haunted, but an epicenter of these haunts appears to be the variety of old cathedrals that are common all over the country. My father and my uncle were visiting one of these behemoths, and for whatever reason, my grandparents were outside already, and the two kids had lagged behind. These cathedrals are usually well decorated and beautiful, so it is fairly common to go in the off hours and spend time touring, even when no one else is around. As my father was on his way out all of a sudden, the boys heard a short tune played on the organ upstairs. In a building so large, the organs can be massive, so when they are played, it's a hard thing to miss. My father and uncle thought there was no one else in the building with them, so curiously they wandered up the spiral staircase to see who was there. As my uncle got to the top of the stairs, he turned in the direction of the organ and went pale. He looked like he couldn't quite figure out what he was staring at. My dad peered over the balcony ledge to see what drew such a reaction from my uncle. Apparently, not only was there no one up there, the organ was also locked up tight, and upon looking around further, they concluded that there wasn't even another way off the balcony other than the staircase they came up. My father has described feeling like a massive weight dropped in his stomach and dread overcoming him. Both kids tore out of that cathedral as fast as they could. I've asked my dad a ton of questions over the years about this incident to try and get as much context as I can. What he has told me is that even if there was another way off the balcony, the amount of time between the organ playing and them getting to the top of the stairs was probably 20 seconds. Likely not enough time to close the organ up and magically disappear. Hard to pull off even for a ghost. I once heard someone say you should never answer a voice calling your name when you know you're all alone. When I was younger, I lived in Malaysia in a crappy old apartment. My sister was at school most of the day, and I would get off school at around 12 p.m. I remember this one time, I was all alone until my sister came back from school at 4 p.m. I was watching TV when I heard my mom calling me. It was coming from the hallway leading to the front door. It was unusually loud. I remember opening the door to look for her, but she was nowhere to be found. Several times after that, whenever I was alone, I heard my sister's and my mom's voice calling, but I didn't answer. Over time, I learned that it wasn't really them. Years later, my mom's friend came over, and the topic of ghosts came up. She said, you should never go near or answer a familiar voice when you know that you're home alone. She explained that this meant a spirit was calling to you and that they often use the voices of the people you love the most to lure you to them. This freaked the hell out of me. But now I knew that I had done the right thing by ignoring those voices. This doesn't happen to me anymore, but I always shudder when I think about what could have happened to me if I had responded. When I was single, I ventured into the world of online dating and stumbled upon a guy named James. Our initial interactions seemed harmless enough as we exchanged messages, but one day, things took a bizarre turn when we exchanged numbers and he initiated a call. During our conversation, he adopted an unsettling demeanor, referring to me as his pet and subjecting me to a weird intelligence test. Despite me passing the test, his behavior grew increasingly strange. One particularly alarming proposition involved his desire for me to visit him and star in a homemade horror film, wherein he envisioned me as a belly dancer performing in scenes of a questionable nature. 
including a chilling scenario of bathing with him in a tub of fake blood. Or so I hope he meant fake. His unsettling ideas even extended to plans to lure me into the woods to experiment with hypnosis using an emerald necklace. Feeling deeply unsettled, I made the decision to sever ties with him. As I went to his profile to block him from further contact, curiosity led me to go through his photos first. What I discovered only fueled my unease. He was a bald man, adorned with tattoos, sporting eerie white contact lenses, and posing in unsettling scenarios, such as a hopefully fake blood-covered garage while wearing a ski mask. Without hesitation, I blocked him, hoping to leave this creepy encounter behind me. Years later, just when I thought I had escaped his eerie presence, fate threw an unexpected curveball. While I was driving home from the mall, a vehicle pulled up beside me. To my horror, it was James. His eerie grin and knowing wave sent shivers down my spine. I watched him as he sped off. The memory of our strange conversations and his eerie demeanor came flooding back to me. That night, I made sure all my doors were locked, and I double-checked the windows. I couldn't help but wonder what could have happened if I had agreed to meet him in person but I was grateful for my instincts that led me to block him all those years ago. From that day on, I was more cautious about who I interacted with online, realizing that not everyone is who they seem to be. When I was a bit younger, around 10 to 12 years old, I had these pills that I was taking, which unfortunately had side effects that prevented me from falling asleep. Every evening, I lied in my bed and was awake. This usually went on until 3 a.m. every night. I lied in my bed with my head facing the wall in which my bedroom door is also built in. I don't remember why, but for some reason I turned around and looked at my bedroom door, and standing in the doorway was a figure, about two meters tall, but it looked more like a shadow. I suddenly felt freezing cold even though it was summer and I was under my comforter. I started to sweat, but not normally. It was a cold sweat and I got goosebumps. I couldn't move. I think it felt like the shadow was petrifying me. I could only breathe with difficulty, but after what felt like an eternity, I managed to call out for my father. Fast forward a few years, I was about 14 or 15 years old. I hadn't seen this shadow for a long time and thought it was a dream or something. But then one morning I saw the figure standing in the small office in our apartment. It appeared to be a woman, but disfigured and stretched out. It was standing next to the cupboard that served as a kind of wall. The same thing happened again. Cold sweat and goosebumps. It was shorter this time. At first I thought that maybe this was a side effect of the medication. Maybe it caused me to have hallucinations. However. The second hallucination was during a time when I was off the medication. As I was a kid, it happened occasionally that during the night when I was lying in my bed in my room, I could feel a very intense presence watching me. It was a rather rare event, maybe a few times in a year. When I felt it, I just kept my eyes closed and tried to ignore it until it either vanished or I fell back asleep. It definitely felt like it was more on the evil side of things. Well, as I got older, I decided that I should confront this weird fear. As I got the feeling the next time, I confronted the presence by just opening my eyes and saying loudly, a friendly, hello, big mistake. The presence seemed to become even more intense than it had ever been before, and my memories of the event start to get fuzzy from there on. I know that I was absolutely 100% awake. I know this because I did my lucid dreaming check, looking at the alarm clock twice and confirming that the time it shows does stay consistent and does not randomly change. I remember that immediately after doing the alarm clock check, I stood up to leave my room, pretty much in a panic, as I felt that something terrible would happen. On my way out, dozens of shadow hands broke through the floor and tried to catch me. I ran as fast as I could. I'm not able to remember anything after that. Anyway, 
it never happened again.